Room one, hello, hello. Hello everyone, um, this is Antoine Womack, Chair of the Alabama Democratic Party LGBTQ Caucus. I wanted to take this opportunity as Chair um, of the LGBTQ uh, Plus A Caucus uh, to discuss um, the decision of the uh, SDEC of the Alabama Democratic Party's decision to do away with our caucus. As many, as many of you do know, uh, for the past four years, since 2018, after uh, Chairwoman Nancy Worley, and at that time, Vice Chair uh, Dr. Randy Kelly was voted out and also was ousted by the Democratic National Party um, over their uh, mishandling, but also because of the lack of diversity. Everything that is transpiring uh, is uh, definitely uh, in retaliation to uh, that decision that the Democratic National uh, Committee uh, made back in 2018. During that time, um, there were a lot of findings as to why um, the National Party intervened in Alabama Democratic business. Um, three of that I do know that I, you know, that I will tell you. Um, one was because of the fact that uh, Alabama Democratic Party was not diverse. Um, there were no seats at the table for uh, Hispanics, disability, uh, those who are of the Native American uh, descent. Um, not only that, there was not even a seat at the table for those of us who are of the LGBTQ um, community. And so during that time, um, the DNC felt that it was very appropriate and that it was of the best interest of the future of this party that our bylaws uh, be updated, but those bylaws also represent what the national platform of the Democratic Party stands for. Um, the second reason why uh, we went through such ordeal back in 2018 was because of what we're currently dealing with now, which is basically a group um, or a particular entity of our party uh, wanting um, complete control, you know, and that is what we will consider the minority caucus or the black caucus, which is basically most of the members of the Alabama Democratic Conference. Um, I say all of that uh, to say this is that I do not believe that when we are in a democracy and when we are uh, supposed to be an entity um, that is um, of for everybody, I don't believe that one group of individuals um, should be running everything. And that's exactly what um, the Minority Caucus, along with their vice chair, um, Dr. Joel Reed, wants to do. Is, um, he wants to limit the voice and wants to silence others while yet promoting a divisive and a very, very strong divided uh, party. And that is exact. That's exactly what we um, what we don't need. And so yesterday uh, was our uh, quarterly SDEC meeting, which is the State Democratic Executive Committee. Uh, many of us had already known that this was going to happen. Uh, we did not know, and I will say this: we did not know that it was going to happen uh, in the magnitude that it did. But we knew that, you know. Um, that they were going to find ways to illegally uh, push these bylaws through uh, and that they were going to alienize and basically silence those of us who would not uh, submit uh, to their way of doing things uh, for, the, um, for our Democratic Party. Uh, and so where we stand now, now that that's over, where do, where do we go, where do we stand? Uh, currently, right now, the bylaws that were uh, 
that were adopted on yesterday uh, basically gives the vice chair of uh, the of the of the prevailing minority caucus, which is Dr. Joel Reed, uh, gives him the authority to now appoint individuals to committees. They did away with the terminology of caucuses. Caucuses give individuals leverage, and it also gives them the ability to have influence. Uh, within a particular part or a particular entity of the party. The caucuses have the ability to influence. Um, they have the ability to be able to bring in other members of the Democratic, um, the, the, uh, Democratic constituency to be a part to get an at-large seat on uh, the State Democratic Executive Committee. So those caucuses were very important. Those caucuses made sure that when it came down to decision making of the party, uh, that there was a definite seat at the table uh, for those of us who were a part of these particular caucuses. Now, based off these new bylaws that were um, enacted on yesterday, um, these bylaws now call, which we know to be caucuses, now committees. There is a difference. Let me say this. There is a difference. The difference is that these committees are appointed. These committees are appointed by who? Dr. Reed. He has the authority through these new bylaws to appoint those members to those committees. There is only one caucus in the Alabama Democratic Party, and that is the Minority Caucus, which is the Black Caucus. Well, why is that? According to these bylaws, guess what? The only way that you can be considered a caucus, you at least have to be, you at least have to represent 15% of the electorate in the Democratic Party. You at least have to have at least 15% of the electorate, which basically means that when it comes down to the overall voter uh, voter turnout for the presidential election, your ethnicity or your uh, your group of individuals that you represent, if they do not equal up to 15 percent in the total vote or through census, guess what? Through these bylaws, you are not considered a caucus. So that's how they came up with the committees. Once again, these committees uh, will be uh, chosen by Dr. Reed. Dr. Reed will then choose who will lead these committees and so forth and so on. So now I guess the question then becomes, and I, I think this is this is the goal, this is what I think everybody wants to know. Surely I want to know. Um, and not only do I want to know, but I think you want to know too. For those members who were elected at large through these caucuses, I guess the question is, and I guess what people are trying to find out now, do these members remain on the SDEC or do they no longer exist? Because do remember that the reason that we were able to bring in such a slew and a heavy number of, uh, of young adults and young individuals between the age of 18 to 35 was because of these diversity caucuses. Before these diversity caucuses were implemented, please do know that there were only maybe about 10 the most that were members of the SDEC that were under the age of 36. I'm going to repeat that. Before the caucuses were established, and before the youth caucus was established, when it came down to the overall body of the SDEC, there were only, and I repeat, there were only anywhere from five to 10 of those members out of almost 190 who were under the age of 35. That is horrible. Now, after the caucuses were implemented and after um, the youth caucus was brought from a committee to a caucus, we brought in over 51 
individuals under the age of 36. That is the biggest number and the largest number since the existence of uh, the modern day of the Alabama Democratic Party. So I asked Dr. Dr. Reed, and this was on uh, Friday night uh, when I went to Montgomery uh, for the welcome and reception uh, for the SDEC. I had a conversation with Dr. Reed and Dr. Kelly, and I, and I expressed to both of them my concerns. Need, I, need do I remind you, they both are very political in mind. And so they know how to sit there and, you know, shake their head and you know and not with you they they know how to continue to uh talk the language as if that they are wanting to come to the table and compromise but all but behold guess what they really don't want to compromise they just want to have the benefit of doubt of saying that you know hey i made them do what you wanted me to do but uh i said to talk to you that's not good enough that's not good enough so after having, and let me say this, please, for those of you who are watching right now, and for those of you who are on here, please like and share. Please like and share this, because I needed to get out. I needed to get out. Uh, I, I can't read comments. If you send comments, uh, or if you send questions, uh, I do my best to answer them. This was not a planned video. This was something that I just wanted to do because of the fact I know that um, that we are in the post era of the bylaws that were put in place by the DNC. Because after those bylaws were voted in on yesterday, they took effect immediately, basically ratifying what was already in the new bylaws to now these uh, I mean the old bylaws to now quote unquote these new bylaws. Uh, and so like I was saying, I had an opportunity to sit and talk with both um, Dr. Keller and Dr. Reed. Now, Dr. Reed said something that was very, very important. And he said something that, uh, that I have no choice but to, uh, to hold him accountable for. He said, Mr. Womack, I, I am an expert at these, um, these bylaws. And if you just trust me, and, and, and if you just give me an opportunity, all the concerns, and, and I'm, I'm quoting him right now, all the concerns and all the issues we got going on, I promise you these new bylaws are going to fix them. And my first question to Dr. Reed was, how is it that this is going to fix the problem that we currently have when you are basically silencing and kicking the chair from under the table for individuals who are in the real minority. If you are not a part of the majority, you are in the minority. If you do not have two thirds of the vote, if you do not have two thirds of the vote to push anything through, guess what? You are a part of the minority. And so, Dr. Reed told me as we were continuing talking, you know, I guarantee you that this is going to clean up all of the mess. You know, uh, this is going to clean up all of these unnecessary issues we're going through. And he, he looked at me in my eye and grabbed my chest and said, Mr. Womack, don't you worry because I'm going to give you what you want. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to make sure you took taken care of. Now, hear me when I said when he said, you're going to be taken care of. I'm going to make sure you took care of. But Antoine represents an entity, represent an organized subordinate within the Alabama Democratic Party, which is the LGBTQ uh, plus I8 caucus. So you don't take care of me. No, I need you to do what's right. Dr. Keller said the same thing. So um, I see comments here. And I see questions. So since all of that happened and since uh, the meeting on yesterday, today has been a lot of developing. Uh, a lot of developing things have transpired. I, I came home maybe about 10 o'clock, thought I was going to actually, please like and share this. Please like and share this, people. Because I, I, I want people to be a part of this. Because what I'm getting ready to tell everybody to do 
Uh, it's, it's gonna take it's gonna take a lot of us, and so I need y'all to please like and share this so people know what they need to do. Um, so since leaving Montgomery, and like I said, I got home um, possibly uh, around ten o'clock today. During that time since I've been home, I have gotten uh, a slew of emails. Uh, from allies within the state, and you guys won't believe it, allies outside of the state of Alabama that have heard of this catastrophe and have heard about what has happened. I've gotten emails from individuals out of Enterprise, Alabama. I have gotten emails from individuals out of Mobile, Madison County. But I've also gotten emails from individuals who are in this fight with us out of the state of Georgia. I had the opportunity today um, to speak with uh, the vice chair of the Democratic Party of Georgia LGBTQ caucus, Miss um, Patricia Laster. Um, I, um, I also um, had the opportunity to speak with her. And I had the opportunity to tell her what was going down um, for the record so that people will know and being transparent. Uh, our communication started through an email that was CC with the chair uh, of the Democratic Party of Georgia's LGBTQ caucus. Um, and both of them have ensured me that they have already, they have already been in contact uh, with some of uh, some of our fellow uh, LGBTQ caucuses and other states about this and bringing some resources, but also raising um, awareness how this is not going to go down, uh, and this is not what we do as Democrats. Uh, Ms. Laster also has also informed me. Um, that national is uh, is aware, and not only is the national party aware, but the national caucus uh, and the chair of our national caucus is definitely aware of this. Uh, and so there is help that is coming. But this is what I need everyone to do. This is what I need everyone to do for me, for Georgia. Uh, and I do believe that... Um, uh, her and uh, a couple of other individuals are in conversation and that there is going to be more resources and going to be more um, uh, more activity uh, poured this way for uh, for our uh, our caucus uh, and saving our party and our caucus so this is what I need everyone to do I need everyone to reach out to your county party chairs or your county party um, executive board members and state how you are in opposition of these proposed charge bylaws. The only way the state party is going to is going to get any pressure is got to happen from the county level. When county when county uh, parties or county chapters start raising sand, then that puts the pressure on the state. And so I need everyone to find out who your county chair is. Chris, I see Chris Nelson, who is a member, a SDEC member uh, in district. I think he's down in District 45. Don't quote me on that, down in Chilton County. Um, Chris, has been very instrumental, and I know he will have access or help me get access to all of our organized county chap county uh, parties in the state, so we can get those out to people who want that. Please call these people. Please call these county chairs and these county executive board members to let them know how this will affect the county parties. Do know that this is not a good move for us. Why this is not a good move for us outside of these caucuses is because these bylaws have stripped 
the A L A A F L A F O. I can't I can't pronounce the biggest union here. I can't pronounce it, but you guys know what I'm talking about. These bylaws have stripped them from being able to be the biggest union in the state, and the union president for the state. Um, has put out a message saying that they will not give Democratic candidates nor Democratic incumbents any more money. For those of us who ran for legislature and for those who are a part, guess what? Though that was one of your main bigger donors to the uh, to the Alabama Democratic Party, which were the unions. Now, guess what? We lost that. We, we, I, I mean, we lost that. And I am outraged. So we cannot, we cannot, uh, we cannot sit back. We cannot be quiet. Uh, yes, it does hurt. That's fine. That is fine. Yes, it does hurt. Am I hurt? Yes, I am. But the good part about it is that it has not done anything but given me more energy and given me more tenacity to get out of here and fight like hell. That's exactly what it has done. And so with that being said, uh, do know we're ready for a fight. Do know that we're going to let them know that this is not a dictatorship. You know, but... This is a democracy. This is a opportunity for all of us to save our state Democratic Party for the future, for my generation, for the generation that is to come after me. We have to save our party. And so I just wanted to take this moment um, as the chair of this great caucus. And I am so proud and I'm honored to have had the opportunity to be elected, and I plan to continue to serve. I need your help. I, I need your help. This 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 legislature is coming up with all kind of legislations that are attacking our community, and one way that they are attacking us the most is by um, by discriminating and pushing hate bills towards uh, our brothers and sisters of the trans community. Not only that, they are also attacking our women, telling our women what they can and can't do with their bodies, making their own health care rights. I need your help. I need you guys to stand with me. We got a big fight on our hand, um, but I am so glad and excited that we have allies and we have some of our fellow brothers and sisters that are within our community in Georgia and in other states that are going to be joining us in this fight. And so I say this to say we may be a little discouraged. Some may even feel defeated. Some are just outright tired. But I do want to remind you that we cannot throw in the towel just yet. I promise you, and I don't make I don't make promises, but I promise you this. I am not going to stop advocating and I am not going to stop fighting for the thousands of Alabamians who identify as LGBTQ and even our allies. I am not as your leader I am not going to stop fighting. I will hold them accountable. I will hold their feet to the fire. And we will get those involved who need to be involved in this fight to make sure that our voice is not limited by a whole bunch of individuals who are not progressive, but they are a part of the problem. I want you to know that. I want you to know that I am going to do that. There will be more communication coming within the next week or so um, as to what will uh, what we will be doing. Uh, I'm going to be um, 
putting together um, some more of these um, videos. Uh, I'm going to be having some other people on to talk about our next process uh, until we come together again for our SDEC meeting. Uh, if you um, want to talk further with me, or if you want to talk more about how you guys can be a part for those who are not members of this caucus, uh, please inbox, please in the inbox, uh, leave your name, telephone number, uh, a good email, and what county or what state you're in. And I'll make sure that somebody get back with you to keep you guys abreast on what, um, what it is that we're planning to do. I felt that this was very necessary and I also um, felt that it was important as the, as the chair of this caucus that I speak to the people who follow and for the members who are part of this caucus. Just to let you know uh, that we're not going to be defeated and that I am in this um, until the end. And we will prevail and we will overcome this and we will win in the end. I do see one of our uh, our caucus members, uh, Alice Spake. Uh, it's good to see you, Alice. And yes, um, there are a lot of bills down there right now that are, are far stream to the point where it, it's just plain out, just bigotry. Uh, and so I, I do I do agree with you. Thank you, Linda Turner, uh, out of Houston County. Um, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, Catherine uh, uh, Gee. Um, president of the Cab County Dems. Okay, great. Please make sure, make sure you uh, inbox your information so me and you can touch base and talk. Uh, so we can make sure that the people down at the Cab County uh, is aware of that. Thank you, thank you, Chris. Um, I, I most definitely know that Marshall and the Shelby County uh, Dems are with us, and so thank you, thank you, guys. Uh, I'm gonna get up off here. Um, but please, please, I want to make sure that people know what is going on. But the only way that they're going to know what's going on, we got to get the word out on the county level. That's why I need your help. Until next time, let's keep the fight. Let, let's, um, you know, let's stay encouraged. But I do, I do believe more than anything, let's protect each other. We have individual.